Hello everyone. I remain our Mr. Noah Dowdy Adepule. Um, today we're going to be doing a very fantastic uh, topic. I'll be putting you through a fantastic topic. And uh, what's the topic all about? The topic I'll be taking you through today is what we call uh, longitude and uh, latitude. Longitude and latitude. This topic actually is a very fantastic topic. I will try as much as possible to make it very easy. Now, when we say longitude, what do we mean by the term uh, longitude? A longitude is an imaginary line running from north to south. Now, this is actually a diagram here. Now, let's take a look at this diagram. A line running from north to south. North to south is what we call what? Longitude. Now, likewise, the case for latitude. Latitude is an imaginary line running from west to east. From west to east. Now, what do you mean by that? Look at latitude. Is a line running from what? From west to what? To east. And that is why we call this um, latitude. Now, how it says that? As far as um, longitude and latitude is concerned, there is need to understand the concepts behind this. And what is the concept? In the case of longitude and latitude, there is something let me divide this by an, with an imaginary line. Let me assume this is the center. Now, it is important that if you have a diagram of this nature and you want to consider longitude and latitude, I can easily summarize it like this. Let me assume that I have a circle. Let me draw my imaginary line from X and Y axis. A line running from the north to the south is known as my longitude. Why a line running from the world west to the east is known as a latitude. Now, having said that, in longitude and latitude, it is important to know your origin. After drawing these two imaginary lines, x axis and y axis, the line running, the first line running from here to here is called my equator. It's called the equator. It's called the equator. It's called uh, the equator. So let me clean this up. Good. So it is called the equator. This is actually called my equator. Why the first line running from the north to the south is called the Greenwich Meridian? The Green Meridian. Now, it is quite important that you understand the word the equator for latitude and Greenwich Meridian for the word longitude. That is the origin for the case of latitude is called equator. The origin for the case of longitude is called your what? Your Greenwich Meridian. And that is the basic idea behind longitude and what? Latitude. Now let's move on to the next thing. Let's move on to consider the example. Okay. Now what does the question really says? Sketch the position of the following places on the Earth's surface. 15 degree north, 30 degree west, that is for A. And uh, B, 15 degree north, 45 degree east. For C, is 0 degree north and 30 degree west. And then for D, you have 0 degree and uh, 45 degree east. For E, you have 65 degree south, 0 degree. And then uh, for F, 65 degree south and 45 degree east. Now, how do you draw, how do you sketch this uh, position on the edge of this? Now, this is all you need to do. First and foremost, you draw your big circle. Let me, have, you know, let me consider this as my circle. Having done that, 
sketch out your, your imaginary line. Now, how have been able to do that? Invariably, it's very important that you indicate your equator. This is my equator. It's also important that you indicate your Greenwich meridian. Let me call this my Greenwich meridian. Meridian. This is actually called the word the Greenwich meridian. Now, having said that, this is the, the, the normal nature of longitude and latitude. Now, let's move on to the first question. The first question says A, 15 degree north and 30 degree west. Now, do not forget that this is your north pole, south pole, west pole, and your east pole. And when we consider 15 degree north, 15 degree north will be what? Move down to this word axis. Now, in that case, your 15 degree north can be drawn anywhere on this region. So let me just draw something of this nature. And call this line 15 degree north. And I'm done. I do one again to consider the next one, which is 30 degree west. To consider your 30 degree west, this is your eastern direction and this is your west direction. Now, the 30 degree west will be placed along this region. So, when you are placing the west, uh, the, the angle along this region, you are going to be having it this way. Now, this particular what, line is what we call what, line 30 degree what, west. The point at which 15 degree north and uh, 30 degree west intersect is known as a point A. So this is my point A and I'm done. You move on to the next one. The next one says 15 degree north. Fantastic. I don't need to draw this again because we have done that before. Then you move to the next one. 15 degree, 45 degree east. Your east region falls here. So, all you just need to do is to draw your what line after your Greenwich what meridian. Now, what you have here in 45 degree what is, is something of this nature. So, you must indicate that this line is what 45 degree east. The point at which 15 degree east north and the 45 degree is meet is called point what? Point B. When we go again to C, C has 0 degree and 30 degree west. You need to be very careful of 0 degree. You don't know if this 0 degree is for what? Equator or it is for the Greenwich Meridian. Then how would you get to know that? Leave your zero degree alone, then move on to the one that has a direction, which is 30 degree west. Now, when you look at your 30 degree west, as we've drawn already, oh, this is line, this is my 30 degree west. So, I don't need to draw that again. And the other one has to do with zero degree. Definitely means this west must definitely intersect with the word origin. And this is zero degree, equator, zero degree. Now, this is the point at which the boat meets. And then uh, I would call that my point C, and I'm done. Now, moving on to the next thing, which is the D. To sketch the case of D, you have 0 degree and 45 degree east. Now, let's leave the 0 degree and move to 45 degrees. And then um, I think I'm uh, looking at this diagram, 45 degree east has been drawn already. I have this. So I don't need to draw it again. So the 0 degree has to be located. Already we have something of this nature for my 45 what degree east. Now, where does it intersect with 0 degree? Yes, the equator as well. So we call this point, point what D. And I'm done. When you move on again to the next one, which is 65 degree south, when you look at the position of this particular what, circle, we have here as a north and the one below as a south. 
And now this time around, you're having 65 degrees south, which indicates that you can place your what? Your longitude, your latitude along this particular line because it's 65 degree what? South. So you indicate this as your what? 65 degree what? South. Falling in the south what's direction at any point on below this um, imaginary line along the x-axis. So you have it. Now, for the case of um, zero degree, now this means that um, if I'm um, having this as 65 degrees south, where is it meeting the origin? It is meeting with the origin at this particular point, which is um, your Greenwich what meridian. Now, if this is your, your point of origin, then automatically this point becomes point what? E. And then moving on to the last one, 65 degrees south has been drawn already, so I don't need to draw it again. And then 45 degrees east, 45 degrees east, oh, this is the point also again. So the point of intersection is here, so you don't need to draw that over again. So finally, we are going to be having this point as F. So in nutshell, we have been able to sketch the position of the polling places on the earth's surface and that ends the world solution to the question and that is how to be about it. So let us move on to a more different example. Let us move on to a more different example. And what does the question say? Now this time around, we are going to be looking at uh, the angular difference between two pairs of place on the earth's surface. How do we determine the angular difference between two pairs of place on the earth's surface? Now I'm going to try as much as possible to break that down. I'm going to try as much as possible to break that down. Hope we are together. So let us move on. Now, find the angular difference between the following pairs of places on the earth's surface. We have point E and we have point F. This is a question on its own and this is another question. So we take it one after the other. Let us take solution. Let us take A first. To solve this question, as usual, all you just need to do is to draw your wall in a circle. Now, having done that, it is important that you want sketch out your imaginary line. Sketch out also your equator. Very, very important. And sketch out also your greenish meridian. Now, having done that, then you move straight to the question. 15 degree north can be drawn here. That's the position for north. And also again, 45 degree east. 45 degree east will be falling along this direction. Then you do that also. Then indicate this as a 45 degree what east, and you are done. The point of intersection is here. And let us call the point point one E. You move on to the next one. 25 degrees south. 25 degrees south. Now, for 25 degrees south, all you just need to do is to draw your diagram as well. Any region around here. So indicate it as 25 degrees one south. And you're done. Then you move on to 45 degrees east. Wow, 45 degrees has been drawn already, so you don't need to draw it again. And this is your point of what? Intersection. Let us call it point what? F. Now, the question is find the angular difference. How can we determine the angular difference between point E and point F? To determine the angular difference between our point E and point L, all you need to do in this case Okay, is to what? Point out the origin between the two imaginary lines. Extend your line from this origin, the center of this y axis and x axis. Extend it to the first one point, which is E, and extend it to the what? Second point, which is what? F. Now you have been able to do what? Extend the two points to E and L. So the question is, what is the angular difference between this point and this point? Now, the next thing you need to do afterwards, drawing these two lines, is to draw your points from this origin 
to any of the equator, either the, either the equator or the bluish meridian. But you need to be very careful when selecting which one to what intersect your origin width in this case. Now, we have this to E, we have this to L. Now, on the line of what? Longitude. On this line of longitude, because this is the common, common line. The line is common to both E and L. So, we have a common longitude in this case. Now, your origin, your line of origin will draw from here to the word equator. The reason being that it must be alongside with what your point E and L, which is from the origin to the word equator. Now that we have been able to do that, we are looking at E, point E, as 15 degree north and 45 degree east. This is 15 degree north and 45 what? degree east. We have done that. And uh, F has 25 degrees south and 45 degrees east. 25 degrees south and 45 degrees. So the common angle we have here is your what? 45 degrees east. Now, having said that, this means that uh, the angle from this point to the origin, let me say from this point to the origin, let me call this point, um, point Y. And let me call here, this is the center O. So the angle between E O Y is what your 15 degree. And the angle between F O Y F O Y would be 25 degree because 45 and 45 is a common what angle. So you have no business with that. So you have here to what 25 what degree. So by so doing, you are actually looking for the angle EOF, EOF. So in this case now, angle EOF, which is the angular difference between E and F, would now be equal to angle EOY plus angle FOY. Therefore, your angular difference EOF would now be equal to what 15, plus 25 and 15 plus 25 will give us nothing less than what 40 was degree and that gives us the angular difference between E and F. Now let's take a look at, um, let's draw this circle. Now having drawn this circle, the next thing you need to do is to indicate your imaginary lines. Then it is important that you must indicate your equator and it is also important that you indicate your greenish meridian or this your what? The greenish meridian. Now having said that, so now going back to the second question that was stated here. 70 degree north and 35 degree west. 70 degree north and 35 degree west. Now to do that on your diagram, your 70 degree north will be somewhere around this region because this is my north region, my north axis, the south, the west, and the east. So 70 degree north is going to be somewhere around here. So let us call here 70 degree what not I'm done. And um, also again when you look at the second one, it says 35 degree west. So you do the same thing 35 degree west by locating your 35 degree west. Now by so doing your 35 degree west you fall somewhere around here. So I can easily have something of this nature. Then it's important that you indicate this as a what? 35 what degree west and you are done. So the point of intersection, what is it called? The point of intersection, the point of intersection is called G. For the second one, we have 40 degree north and 35 degree west as H. Now in this case now, I can easily call this point my G. Now, for the second one that talk about 40 degree north, already we have 70 degree north here, then 40 degree north will fall below it. 
because it's still within the north axis. So you indicate this to be your what? 40 degree north. And the other part of it is 35 degree west. Now, 40 degree north comma 35 degree west are stated in the question B over there. Then, when you look at 35 degree west, it has been drawn already. 35 degree west has been drawn already, so I don't really need to stress myself drawing this again. All I just need to do is to what? Map out my point of intersection and put it to what? H. Now I have my G and I have my H. Now the next question is how would you determine the angular what? Difference. Do not forget the concepts. What you just need to do is to locate the center of the cycle. Okay? Map out a straight line from this point to H. Also again, map out a straight line from this point to this as well. Now, the angular difference you are looking for is the angle in between H, H and G, or G and H. And don't forget your last line, from the center to the origin. So from the center, we map the origin at this particular point. So it is important that you will locate your origin to origin. Now, in this case now, we are to determine the angle between G and H, but you need to be very careful. The common angle I have between this and this is what 35 watts degree west, which is the common longitude. Now that this is the common longitude, this indicates that um, since G is 70 degree north and 35 degree west, the angle in between G and the origin is 70 degree, that's what it means. So on that note, let me label this as a center, center O. Let me label this as center X. So in a nutshell, in a nutshell, I can easily summarize this as an angle OGX to be equals to what? 70 what degree. OGS to the origin. OGS makes an 70 degree. OG, let's look at the OHS. OHS from this angle to this angle. OHS. And OHS. OH or HOX. Let's call it HOX. Let me clean this up. Now, I will say that. We have OGH and we have um, OHX. But in this kind of um, scenario, all you need to do, or uh, all you have to determine is uh, the angle between G and H. To determine the angle between G and H, do not forget that the angle in between G, O, S and the origin is what? 70 degree north. G, O, S is 70 degree north. Now, if angle GOS is 70 degree north, you can indicate that writing angle GOS is equal to a 70 degree north. Now that I'm done with this, I move on to the next one, angle HOS. Now, do not forget that this line of H has 40 degree and 35 degree west. So, the 35 degree west is your common angle. So, you are going to consider this as an angle 40 degree north. So, angle OHOS to the origin, angle HOS to the origin gives us what? 40 what? Degree. So, you can decide to ignore the north. Now, in this case now, our mission is to determine angle GOS. Now, when you look at this, let me, let me just summarize this out. I have an angle of this nature. Here to the G, here to the O, here to the H, and here to the X. And I know that the angle bit from here to here is a 70 watt degree. And I also understand the fact that the angle from here, H to X, is what? 40 watt degree. And my mission, as far well as this diagram is concerned, is to determine my angle GOX, which is a, this angle. Theta. So, invariably, invariably, I can easily say that uh, 
invariably, I can easily say that um, angle. So looking at this now, angle GOH plus angle HOS angle H O what X is equal to the total angle angle G O X. Now, since angle G O H is what we don't know, which is our angular difference, G O H is angular difference, and the H O S is equal to 40, and then G O S is equal to 70 what degree. So our angular difference G O H is equal to what 70 degree minus what 40 degree, which is equal to what 30 degree. So in a nutshell, so you can easily say or state this as um, your angular difference, your what angular what angular what difference is equal to what 30 what degree. That is all. You need to be able to know when to add the two angles together and when to subtract the two angles together. And the secret is that um, I'm going to summarize that the secret is that when your what your point from the origin to the what to the equator from the origin to origin if it is outside these two lines you are going to subtract by using this word concept but if this origin to origin is between these two lines you add them together like you have here so when you look at this particular second diagram from the origin to the origin from origin to origin from origin to e from origin to what f the origin to origin falls in within these two lines. So, as a result of that, automatically, the, uh, we are going to add the both words together. And um, by so doing, we have come to the end of what? This section. So, that is all about determining, determining the angular difference uh, between two points on the earth's surface. Thank you for watching. Watch out for the series two of this particular topic. Thank you.